stuff and talking to the biggest YouTubers on the planet. Right. For instance, getting my Rolex stolen by my editor. Yes, welcome to the Self Made Podcast. I'm with a special guest on a digital version of this podcast. And um, I'm with a special guest, Rabian. Um, what are you what what are you known for? Like who are what you? What am I known for? Yeah. Um well first of all, I'm known for my name, which is Ray Bean and not Ray Bean. Ray Bean. <laughs> so, <laughs> good way to start a podcast, my man. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify, classify myself as being known necessarily. I would classify myself as on the way to getting known and putting my mark on the world. But if I had to specify what those things are that I want to be known for is to be a very kind, giving person that's out there to help people. Okay. I feel like that, that is, uh, what I want to be known for. Other people might just think I'm a dick, but I <laughs> try to get the middle way here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I've seen you a lot. I've been following you for years right now. Uh, seen you doing sales, a lot of different things. But I'm, I'm personally very curious about what you're doing right now. And maybe for the viewers also right now, where did you start it and where are you going through? Like where right now and what's your vision for the future? So, so what question would you like me to answer first? Because you just asked me four questions. <laughs> so like, okay, what, where did you start? Who is Rabian from like, or Rabin from the, from the start? Where did you start? So also a different question, specify start. What moment of starting do you mean? When I was a kid and started yeah. becoming a little hustler or started becoming an entrepreneur, started at Domino's Pizza, delivering pizzas. Like what moment of starting would you like me to tell you? The moment where you started like doing entrepreneurship, starting as an entrepreneur. So what was the, the moment of the switch that you started like uh, wanted to, yeah, to start a business? Well, for your information, I've always been somebody that is that that is and was very competitive. So in my mind, I always want to win and it doesn't matter who is against me. I just need to win. So I try to use that little game in my head as much in my advantage as possible. So imagine that you're working at Domino's Pizza. All right, I wanna win. So I wanna be able to deliver the most pizzas. I'm not getting paid extra for it. I wish I did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. not getting paid extra to, to give somebody more pizzas. Mm -hmm. But in my head, if I could make more revenue, it meant that I was playing the game better. And I'm a gamer. I, I love gaming. I love yeah. winning. So for every single thing that I did, I was just looking at it from a perspective where I could finish and become the best at it. When I eventually came to this new type of job, I've never heard of it before. I thought it were scammers. It was selling newspapers. And the first time I've heard it, I was like, whoa, selling a newspaper. That uh, sounds like you guys are scamming. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... Um, so I went there, I did my, I did my little um, call, what do you, whatever you call it. I was talking to them and I'm like, hmm, this is actually a very cool job. They told me that instead of working for hours like everybody's doing, you, you, you swapping your hours, you trading your hours uh, as it is for money, I could make money and it wouldn't matter how much time I would spend on it, which if you've never heard of it before is something eye opening, something very interesting, something you, 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 you jaw dropping, especially if you're like 16, 17 years old and you have yeah. not even made more than a hundred dollars in a month. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. suddenly I had the capability to make that in one day because instead of trading my time in, I would be trading my results in. So if I could perform better, I would make more money, which resonated into sales. Um, interesting okay. so if you know me for for a while right you, you probably yeah. think hey his first day at the job selling newspapers how much money did you think do you think i made so like how what's the price of one newspaper what one newspaper is uh around 30 dollars a month uh for a year is 360 dollars. yeah and you make 30 36 35 dollars each newspaper you sell okay so the first day you started right yes uh, I think you're pretty good in the sales and that first time. So let's say you sold 10 to 20 newspapers. So you're saying I would have made $600 on my first day as a 17 year old. 
could be. I, I think you're someone like that does the, that kind of things. <laughs> the first <Yeah>. day. <laughs> I am super competitive, and I will tell you, you are completely wrong. I didn't sell a singular newspaper, not even one, not even one. Okay. I, 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 I became so. I thought like this is the shit. Like I like talking, I like doing something, but mm -hmm. eventually, I just didn't understand the fundamentals. Just understanding what a pitch is and how to convince somebody, the understanding of that isn't enough to be able to to pursue. But there is something that I did learn. The art of not giving up because I wanted to make a hundred dollars a day. I didn't want to go back delivering pizzas. Mm -hmm. And at some point I kept going, I kept going, I kept going and nobody believed in me. I was the guy yelling the hardest that I would make it, but no singular person was there out there having my back, telling me that I could do better mm -hmm. until one day I wanted to give up. And one person told me, don't, don't give up, stay, do one more time. Just believe, just believe that you can. Because if you believe that you can, this is the most cheesy <laughs> shit ever. If you yeah, believe that works. you can, <laughs> you will do it. Long story short, that day I went from zero to five seals in one day. And to give you a little brief version of the, the rest of the story, I became better and better. I... I had my competition in me to always be humble and learn. And at some point I over exceeded everybody and became one of the best people in the company. And it's wow. not based of raw talent. Mm -hmm. The reason why I became the best is because of my competitiveness and willingness to become the best. Any person I believe a hundred percent that put his willingness inside of something, his will not to give up will make it a success as that I did in that moment while selling newspapers. And when I became a manager and also did that very well, I felt like there was something missing. Mm -hmm. Even though I was making a good sum of money monthly, people my age were never making that type of money. I wanted to be better because if you're a winner, you always are looking for ways to improve yourself. And for me, one of those things that was waking up at 5 a.m., going to the gym, going to my work, being there at 7.30 a.m., making sure everybody has everything. I quit drinking, quit smoking, quit everything that was bad for me because I knew every single little piece of edge I can get will make me better than the rest of the people around me. And at some point, you've played the game. You're looking around you. There's nobody to beat. You are already a good manager. So I was like, you know what? I don't feel like I have freedom. Mm. I don't feel like I have the things I really want. I feel stuck. I make money. I spend a lot of money too. Mm. I fuck up my mind. Yeah, I'm right sure. there. Everyone so it, yeah. the next step is becoming an entrepreneur, doing the stuff for yourself. But we live in a pay day and age where online there's a lot of stuff going on. Right, right. Elias? Like you're, you're doing a podcast. You're, yeah. you're having a lot of people on that are telling you different types of things. And this whole... A uh, whole world of online make money type whatever it is it's everywhere so you get stress on not being able to know how to what to pick and what to do what is complicated what is easy everybody's telling me this is easy or this is that for sure no nope. so I, I was just like okay let me just try something you know back in the day we had uh chadu yeah, uh, yeah that was that, that sure. was just everywhere the og, the OG <laughs> in the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, you saw us as everywhere and anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. So at some point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just try to ignore the guy. But I feel like what he's doing, I could do better. Yeah. yeah. Th that is like back in the day, I had this unforgiving ego that nowadays I've learned to put a bit back. Mm -hmm. But if there's one thing that I did learn is that within every bit of light, there should be a little bit of dark. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that people do have a little bit of an ego still. And it's fine to have a little bit of an ego, but when the ego consumes you, you have nothing to give back to. But when you are very given, you are very light, you are very humble, you mm -hmm. still need a bit of competitiveness. You still need that little bit of ego to balance itself out. Yin and yang, you know, like the, the white with the little dot yeah, yeah, of yeah. red in it, of black in it. <laughs> so anyway, back in the day, I was consumed by darkness. I was consumed by ego. I wanted to be better. I wanted to be great. And yeah, yeah, for sure. All for the wrong reasons. Like back then, 
my only reason to become rich was to prove my dad that I could. Hmm. It's okay. interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I got some questions like when you when you said that, like, what sure. is the thing that your dad did? Why you should prove yourself to him? So it's not a, so it's an interesting story that, uh, or an interesting pivot into the story that uh, I was telling. But you got to imagine that if this is a story on its own. But yeah. let me give you also a short version of that story. <laughs> if you're um, if you're from a refugee country. Right, because okay. I am, as you see, I'm not white. Right? I'm mm -hmm. not Dutch. No, um, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to say, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my dad is from Kurdistan, and when okay. he came to Holland, well, uh, let, let me backtrack a little bit. He was never, he didn't want to have a child. He mm -hmm. didn't. He was willing to die for his own country. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to be fair, we as, we as Kurdish people, we don't have a country, but that's the whole point. He wanted to get that country, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, after a lot of war and a lot of things happening, it was just not safe for him to stay. They would decapitate his head immediately if they saw him. So he fled. Eventually, the Netherlands opened his arms, her arms, for my father. Mm -hmm. And my father said, well, this is the moment that I'm going to do a new life, a new moment. This is where I want to give my knowledge to someone else. And you got to imagine this. My dad was a rebellion to the teeth. There was nothing that wasn't a rebellion about him. He was born in a Muslim country and he didn't want to be a Muslim. He was okay. born in a country where people are right-handed and they would smack his right left hand until he would start riding with his right hand, but he would never do that. He was the only person in the whole village that was riding with his left hand. When people would tell him left, he would go right. When people would tell him right, he would go left. And when his parents, mom, dad, anyone told him not to go fight for the country, well, guess what he did? Mm, for sure. He yeah. never wanted to have a kid because he was willing to die. So now suddenly you're going to a different country. You're going to a place you've never been before with a culture you've never seen before. This man comes from villages, mountains, AK-47s. And now suddenly... He is in a Western place mm -hmm. with normal buildings that are not made of sand, yeah. with a school where people talk a Western language, where there are white people and not Arabs with beards. Mm. <laughs> Suddenly, it's normal not to be a Muslim. Suddenly, yeah. it's okay not to have that much pressure of dying around you. So I am born and my dad gives me one thing. He says, listen, well, he didn't say listen. He said, just in the world, to his wife, to my mom, I'm having this kid and I don't want to give him anything. Nothing that I will ever give is going to be for me. This kid is going to have his own way. Why? Everything was being told to me. It was being told to be a Muslim. It was being told to be this. It was being told to go to school, do this, do that. And he didn't want me to have the same way. He said, my son will find his own way. And that's why I'm not giving him anything. So I was born. And, you know, at the clerk, you have to like write the name and give like the birth certificate. He said, I'm not giving my son a name. So he gave a blank sheet. <laughs> because if he one day doesn't like his name, it was me that gave it to him. And I want him to get his own name. Mm. So the man's like, what the, what, what, no, wait, hold on, this is not possible, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like a whole line behind him, a lot of people, and um, the man is smart. He tells him, listen, what you do is go back to your wife, think of a name, and if you have this name, when he's 18 years old, you can always change it into something that he would like. So he's like, okay, fine. Wrote down a name, stick it, it came up. I'm born. I'm living my life but you gotta imagine when you don't really get a culture from back home and you don't know the culture where you are because now suddenly you have a very dutch and white culture i'm in a school with a lot of white people but at the same time my parents are white i had a name ray bean and i was like what the fuck? nobody has this name uh, I'm, I'm weird yeah. his name is mohammed his name is fucking bob ron robin <laughs> i'm ray bean what the fuck? like yo i want to yeah, have a yeah. name that's like like i, I didn't fit in Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to change my name to Ruben or Robin. And when I became 18, my dad came up to me and he says, I have a gift for you. Sit down. 
And he tells me the story about his youth. He tells me the story about how his friends have been dying around him, how he's been fighting for his country, where how he's been doing the most he possibly could and got into a position where he decided to have a child after not ever wanting to have a child. He tells me the story about nothing for him being chosen from himself and people giving him decisions. And then he said that I got born by making all my own decisions. And he thought, if I could be the one finding my own way, I could be the person showing the way to other people. And that is what Rabin means. The one that shows the way. Mm-hmm. When I heard that, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm keeping my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's history, man. So my dad Very nice story. Yeah. had a lot of pressure on me. Mm-hmm. So to pivot back to the point where, um, where I was talking to, like my yeah, dad yeah. was really always there. And he was like, you, you finish school, finish yeah, this, yeah. go to work. Like, I expect this from you. He didn't tell me what to do, but he expected that from me. Mm -hmm. And when you are at a point where I was, there was so much pressure coming on that the only thing that I would do is disappoint him. I could see it in his eyes. And every single time I came up, his belief wasn't there. Like, he would not believe that I would be able to do something. So from a young, young age on, I was just deemed to be a failure in the eyes of my father. Mm Mm-hmm. So I had pressure. I remember at some point I couldn't handle the stress of being at home. I was making a lot of money. So I said, fuck this. I'm out. I'm not coming back. I didn't yeah. speak for them for years. I didn't speak for my parents for years. At least I want you to like fully understand. Yeah. I was hard. And my only promise to myself was I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to show them that I will make a shit ton of money and take care of them. Even though it came from a bad place, it came from a good place. Yeah, for sure. And so I, I did. Know, yeah, I know your thoughts. Yeah, you thought, Paul, so, let me show them the difference. But it actually was pretty uh, good. Yeah. After not speaking for multiple years to them, I came back and, um, you know, we, we build up a bond again. I bought my dad his dream car. Mm-hmm. Um, I took care of the mortgage at the house of my parents. I am building on a relationship together with everybody in the family. And this is something that I've always wanted to do. This is something that I was my dream on doing and achieving. And even though it came from a wrong egotistical place at the start, now after I've developed a lot, I've given that a proper place and I feel like, you know, life is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So like um, going on on the story. So what are your thoughts on like being uh, like this way of teaching your son to grow up? And finding his own way what do you find of this method do you if you like get i don't know if you have any child right now but i don't think so um so if you have like get a child uh get a son do, should you uh would you raise him the same way or no. what's your approach on that so here's because the thing it made right? you the person like because i'm telling you this because it made you the person you are right now right now and you were happy you're having getting money and doing your thing so Maybe so it is the one thing that you have to know is that money is not the number one purpose. It's good mm-hmm. to be taken care of and having whatever you have. Mm-hmm. And back then, for me, money was the only thing that could prove something. So now it's proven and I don't necessarily need it anymore. Mm. Um, well, it's not that I don't need money. Hold on. <laughs> I need money. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah, uh, I sure. don't need a substantial amount of money to take care of myself. As long as I can take care of anybody else that I want to and help as much people, that is the most important thing for me. Mm. Um, but the way I would raise my child is completely different than my dad would do it. Because the thing is, he gave me no decision so I could find the way. And I have found the way. So now I can teach my own children this way. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can teach him that that way, but it's like it, it would it be better than fighting, letting them find their way. Like because you told me in the beginning of the story, it's like your dad has been told from you you have to do this and this and this. Would it not be the same thing if you, as a dad, would tell your son like do this and this and this and let them find their own way? So in my life, I've learned a lot about sales and about convincing, mm-hmm. persuading, and sure. manipulating people, just so to say, right? 
um, having children, and this is my opinion, right? Okay. Having children doesn't mean you, like, I know how I as a person, I am. I'm a rebellion, as my dad was. I wouldn't listen to him and because I knew there would be a better way of doing stuff. But I still look up to my father. It's not that I don't. Right? There are a lot of things I massively respect about him. Mm -hmm. So the keynote here is knowing how to raise a kid. And I feel like I've seen everything that I don't want to see. And I know exactly what I do want to see. I want to be a very good role model for my kid. I want to show them how to handle women, how to handle himself, how to be strong, how to be strong minded, how to take care of himself and the people around him. And I would give him little tasks. I would put him in positions where he would try to stand up after he falls. Mm -hmm. Because listen, Elias, you got to imagine, I've thought over uh, thousands of people how to be better communicators, how to make money, how to get a better mindset, how to get a better mentality. And all of this stuff, my dad back in the day didn't have. I've learned all of these mindset stuff, this psychology, all of this stuff, I know. So with that in mind, I can give my kids so much more knowledge and that much of a better fundament so that he can finally grow up and become even a stronger mind, a stronger person. Yeah, and sure. he's even able to achieve whatever he wants or daughter, right? Like I'm saying son right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. son, we have to because the example. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm very curious of when you're getting a son, and then uh, <laughs> we'll see the, the 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 way of treating it. So do you uh, have a son? Do you have a son yeah. yourself? Yeah. Do you have kids? No, no, no. I don't have kids. Okay. No, no, uh, I was like, oh, maybe was... you're like. No, yeah, no, no, no. So, like, uh, maybe different questions. How old are you right now? For people giving them I'm a better view. Twenty-five. Okay. So you started like yeah. selling newspapers, sixteen, seventeen uh 16 17 yeah yeah so okay so you're now like for seven to eight years in the seals right um yeah yeah basically i mean so, if you don't count the days where i was like hustling on the street and selling other stuff and going yeah, around the sales, right <laughs> i mean in that case like 10 years brother 10 years 10, 10 years, years more than 10 years i i've been uh over a decade worth of sales wow. in me okay so where did you grow up? You told me about all these white kids in the school, and it's sounds... Eindhoven. Eindhoven. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so, uh, pretty. Uh, <laughs> another pretty place. Much. Yeah, yeah. So what is it like that you you've bring grown up like in Eindhoven with all these white kids? So how did you? Because I was also had the same. I'm from Tunisia myself. Uh, so my both parents come from there. I, I've been born here in a little village um, with all white people. And uh, you also f always felt like alone in this place of all these white people. So how did you uh, find yourself between all these different cultures um, from yourself? When you I, I got picked on, bro. I, I, I didn't fit in. Like, you got to yeah. imagine if you don't have a culture from home and you don't get a culture. Like, you yeah, at no. least probably got a proper Tunisian culture. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't. Like, bro, I didn't get a Kurdish culture, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, my dad right. deliberately chose not to make me chauvinistic because he wanted me to find my own way, which I truly appreciate him for. But nowadays he felt sorry for not, for me not being as proud of being Kurdish as I could be. Mm. And um, the thing is, though, I I wasn't really I wasn't really aware of who I was back then. I wasn't really aware of what kind of person I was becoming. And it took me till my 16th or 17th birthday to mm. fully try to fathom what I was or what I was doing because I was already making money. The second I started getting into sales and understanding how mindset works, how, how psychology works, how you, how you can achieve stuff, how to be much more of a winner, how you basically can copy how a person thinks in order to become more successful. That was the moment I started actually understanding life. Hmm. Interesting. So would that be also concluding your biggest lesson of learning sales? Like what it means and what well, it sorry, What do you mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> like you learn sales from like a young age. So the, my, actually my question about that was what was your biggest lesson? What did, was your uh, biggest return on investment of learning sales uh, at the young age? So uh, to be fair, I wish I was younger. Uh, if anything, okay. but, um, the one thing that I've learned is that anything in life is possible by people. So 
Um, if you're asking me what the biggest return of investment is on sales, yeah. I'd say the fact that you learn how to engineer socially. I feel like everybody in a way is an engineer because we're all engineering our own ways and own solutions. We're all problem solvers. And in social engineering is basically your way of socially engineering a solution to a problem that you're facing. If the problem is, is that you have no connections around you, no friends, no love, you can socially engineer your way towards that, towards that, because you have people that have the specific love to give that to you. Sure. And the one thing that I've learned is because I develop myself socially that highly, frequently, and that much, I'm able to socially engineer anything of what, that I want because the secret of life is people. People have anything that you want. Yeah. If that is money in your case, or if that is love or a connection or brain power, knowledge, you just have to know how to socially make, find that solution and socially engineer it. I agree. Yeah, yeah. People are like, everything is a people business. I think a lot of people forget that when they do business. But everything is a people business. And if you, I currently myself have a lot of expertise in marketing. So it's a different approach. You're a sales guy. <laughs> um, but I think they both like connect with each other in a very yeah, strict way. Um, so let me, okay, we like heard about the beginning. Very inspiring story, by the way, uh, of your father and how you've been raised like all these years. But what are, where are you standing right now? Who's Rabin from right now? What are you doing right now? And, I'm very curious. Um, in the meantime, I've made a lot of money. I have freed myself and I've learned what a value means. So back in the day, I wasn't really aware of what value meant. So back in the day, I thought if I just sit in any, any table and think that I can give somewhat of value in that specific conversation, I am valuable. Mm. But that is not how value works because then you're putting a label on something that you're giving instead of looking at what you are yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you just still follow me, Elias. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So imagine this. Back in the day, I moved to Dubai when I wasn't uh, multiple seven figures deep in my bank account. Um, and the thing that I wanted to be do is become even more rich. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to make better connections. Okay. But there, I didn't realize how shallow it actually was. So when you go to these people, they're all flexing their, their car, their money, their this, their clothes, their whatever they have, because they think that that's their way of giving value or that's a reason or way to sit around a table for a specific reason. And I, I was I was there too. I was just buying the Louis Vuittons and all the other stuff because I mm. thought that's the way you fit in. You become the average of the people you have around you. And if all the people you have around you at that point are super rich, I want to become super rich. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. But I was wrong. It was That was one of the biggest lessons I've learned over just making more money. People are fake. They are insecure. They don't know what value is mm -hmm. because they'd say just yes to anything just in order to fit in a specific conversation or in a specific table. They mm -hmm. just say anything and that just makes them irrelevant and not valuable, it makes them nothing. So sure, you might there might be somebody that comes up to me and says, Rabin, I have this thing for you. It's the best business deal you have of your life. Let's have a coffee. I'm like, okay, well, interesting. Let's go sit down. Yeah. And this person is sitting there, puts his Richard Mill on the table, is getting his most expensive cigars out, tries to convince me with some whiskey, and all he's doing is putting his cock on the table. Yeah, I, It doesn't matter to me how much money he's offering me for what kind of business it is. I do not deal with people like that because he, in that situation, thinks that he is what he's owning. He thinks that I care about him having a Dior fucking blast or whatever it is, a Richard meal on the table, an expensive cigar, because he's trying to infinite you. He's trying to show you that that is what he is. But let me give you a good lesson, Ilias. People are not the things that they show. People are the sum of the decisions that they make. So you can see how a person is just purely based on seeing how they do sp specific things. If the only thing that this person is talking about is what he owns, yeah, that's a red flag. Mm. If the only thing that this person is talking about is what he will do, it's a red flag. Mm. But if you can see in the way he's handling a conversation, in the way he's saluting a problem, if you can see 
how he his brain connects when you give him a problem or something to work with, his inspiration that just goes on. Then you know you have a good person. Hmm. Interesting. I I try not to talk about how much money I've made in my life. I try not to put that on the table. I've stopped wearing way too expensive watches, stopped wearing expensive clothes. And I see, bro, there are people I know I'm worth a lot more than them. And I just can sit there, see how they're flexing their little Rolex, don't don't even bother to talk to me. And I'm like, okay, cool, bro. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to have a conversation with you. I know exactly what you're on to. I've had this once, man. I had yeah. this. I had a party at my office. A lot of people didn't talk at me. Suddenly, they come to my office, and what happens? They see my office. They're like, "Well, Ray, what, what, what do you do? What, what is the thing you're doing, bro? Tell mm. me more." And now suddenly, mm. you're interested. Okay, interesting, mm. brother. They see yeah. my car, and they're like, "Whoa, hold on a second. That's <laughs> a nice car, my boy." And uh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's actually what I see also a lot on uh, on Instagram. You see a lot of people flexing. Um, but I was very curious about this thing you called value. So instead of showing, uh, because I know what you mean, people are showing their Rolexes, their nice suits, these, everything to impress other people because they think other people, uh, think that is the thing other people look up to. Right. So what is the thing you bring to the, uh, as a value? What do you think is the most important value you can, you can give to someone else without flexing all these things? So that's so. So here's the thing, bro. What is the what is the need of a person? Oh, sorry about that. What is the need of a person? What's the reason somebody? What? So you don't have to flex all of these things. Once again, you're the sum of the decisions that you make. For instance, I've I know what my value is. I've worked on this point in my life. I know how developed my mindset is. I know how developed my way of doing business is. I know how hardworking I am. I have all of these traits that I'm fully aware of because I've reflected enough time with myself. I've reflected enough whatever it is, right? Mm. So I know what I can bring to the table. So when I, I, I want you to know, first of all, if I see something that something or someone that I like, I'm out there to give value to them nonetheless. I am not here to do, I'm not here to, get something from you, right? I'm not always so, like for me, the most important thing is if I see somebody that is inspiring and fun and cool, you know, I'm here for you. Mm-hmm. I give without expecting anything back. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this podcast with you. You seem super cool. I'm like, that's fun. Uh, the only piece of value that I get of this is like trying to talk back and having some clips on my own channel, but that's not yeah. even necessary. Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. you seem like a cool guy. I was like, cool. If I can give some value to you, I'd love to do it. I don't expect you to come back and now send me a check of a thousand dollars or something. Don't, by the way, that was a joke. Don't do that. But like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's on his way. <laughs> sure. But no, but um, the point, the point is, is that giving without expecting back puts you in positions that you never could ask for. Right. And this is something that I've been doing my whole life to the point that I almost ran up all my money and didn't have anything left to God blessing me back to his point. And it's the same thing. Oh, That's the same thing that I'm doing with the project right now. 50% of all the profits that I make on this project are going to a treasury in order to give back. I'm documenting that. I am basing my life purely on giving back because that's the thing that my heart fills the most with. with. Mm. So that fulfills your purpose? Is that something you... Yes, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So this this project you're talking about is the Freedom Society, I think? Yes, Uh, yes. So can you explain me a little bit more about that? Also for the viewers, uh, because it's how long it's standing, this project? How long are I've, you? I've launched it officially last week. Last week, eh? yeah, because I saw that, I think, on your story. So for new people are watching this, let's, uh, I'm very curious of myself what it's about, like this project. So um, back in Holland, when I started my first entrepreneurship, I was, uh, I started a digital marketing agency. I was bad at it. And eventually, I. <laughs> Sorry? I think everyone started an age at a young age, then yeah. saw, yeah, yeah, and then uh, figured out himself. Yeah. Sorry for the thing is, I needed to step out of the, the sales business because I wanted to become an entrepreneur. I didn't know quite how to do it. Hmm. So, what I learned very fast is that I wasn't good at doing the marketing, but what I was good at was doing the sales. Hmm. So, eventually, I partnered up with somebody. I was looking for a solution. And the solution was getting somebody that is good at it and just do a 50-50 split. Mm. That went well. 
So I was always busy with doing anything in my mind possible. My sir, thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'm getting like the full service for a little coffee. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, very nice. Look at this. Oh, uh, uh, uh. So where's my coffee then? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> um, Looks nice. It's a little ice. Oh, that's nice. I needed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, fuck it. Uh, Where we yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I learned very fast how valuable sales was as, mm -hmm. as, as something because you don't need money to make money with sales. And I knew that before while I was selling newspapers and now I'm doing a lot better numbers. And before I knew it, I scaled my business to 10 K a month. And where I am doesn't matter. I'm always looking for, okay, how can I outperform myself? So, okay, we, we hit a ceiling, but now you're looking for other ways to make money while for doing sure. the same thing. Instead of being an agency for gyms, you're going to be an agency for mortgage brokers. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be flexible. You have to be like water. You have to see opportunities where they're not. And you have to put yourself in a position where you will find these types of opportunities. When I... Eventually, COVID hit. All of the business was gone. All of the money was gone. Even though I was making a hell of a lot of figures, nothing was left. And I had to be creative and find a new way. So everybody was in the guru game back then. They're pushing up webinars and showing whatever and asking a few thousand dollars for any course. 997, 1997. Yeah. So, <laughs> the same bullshit, yeah. And, uh, well, I wouldn't call it bullshit because eventually it was the thing that helped me to get to the place where I am now. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. um. I mean, eventually they made millions and millions and millions of dollars. So I thought this, they have that, but who is following up their leads? I was in mm. marketing, bro. I mm. know how their marketing game worked. I was like, yo, there are 100% people that have phone numbers that are not being called that could be, what if I sell it for them? What if I sell that shit to them? Mm. Done. Yo, what's up, bro? Can I sell you a course? I'll take 30% commission without me. You wouldn't have the money. Let me try. All right, cool. I tried it. I did one week of calling. I made, I think, four or five thousand dollars. I bro, I wouldn't even. I made a lot of money. Let me just put it this way. Yeah, I made a lot yeah, of money, yeah. and I was just looking, looking at myself like, if I can copy myself, if I can copy myself mm. and do this, if I have ten people making five k a week yeah. for me, yeah, I'm loaded. I'm in. Let's fucking <laughs> go. <laughs> but how do you copy yourself? Well, I had all of this knowledge about sales. I have all the, all of this. What if I just l teach people how to do the exact same thing that I've been doing? Cool. I made a course. I did the exact th same thing what the other people were doing. Build a webinar, build a lead flow, ask an, an obnoxious amount of money for a course because I was like, eh, might as well. Yeah. Guess what happens? People actually bought my course. Mm -hmm. And I made with one call thousands of dollars. And something clicked in my mind. There's a lot of money. <laughs> I, there's a lot of money. I just made a monthly wage in like 10 minutes. What the fuck? I call. I made a month late. Well, the, wait a minute. Hold on. Why would I copy myself if I can just do this? Hmm. I started dishing them out, bro. I started dishing them out. Yeah, sure. And I started doing sales calls for my own company and making a shit ton of money. I did this with right intentions. Don't get me wrong. Right and wrong. Like the ego was there. And the wrong and the right intentions were there because I was actually helping those people too. Because eventually people by now have made five, six, seven figures yearly, monthly, weekly. Hmm. They're making a good sum of money, bro, hmm. with the stuff that I taught them. So now I was in a position where I'm like, okay, cool. This is a sales course. This is good. People come work for me from the course to sell my own products. I have this whole thing rolling. And here's where the epiphany came. Why am I doing this? I feel I don't feel like it's fair. What am I? What's going on? And you start almost having an anxiety attack. Okay, cool. You have money now. Cool. You have investments now. I did an, another few projects uh, afterwards that made me even more money. And the second I started hitting those seven figures, I started completely losing myself. 
I didn't even know what left and right. I was the guy wearing the Rolexes, wearing the designer, wearing this, wearing that, talking this shit, talking whatever. My ego was through the roof because I thought I was fucking rich. But what does being rich mean? Good question. That's uh, something I ask myself a lot of times when I, uh, the thing is, I find it actually very uh, inspiring because I had the same feeling uh when you get to seven figures what do you need in like an amount substantial amount that's like enough you get you get the question by yourself you're thinking like why am i actually doing this what is my motivation what's my like what's my purpose and so that will be a change yeah for sure so i've always done stuff for purpose my goal always been yeah. is to put an unforgettable positive impact on the world but at some point i felt sorry because I felt almost bad for asking that much money yeah. for yeah. knowledge that people, well, I mean, sure, I was very secure. I was very confident about what I was teaching people, but mm. I just, I just didn't know, man. And I am there. I'm like, you know what? I need more. Like, I felt like Holland was boring. I felt mm. like my potential. Once again, coming back to the first part that we were talking about, if I am not growing, I don't like it. I want to win. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck in Netherlands talking Dutch to 17 million people when there are over a billion people talking English. There are a billion people that I can help. Not 17 million people, a billion people that I can help. Why would I limit myself to that position? And I've always, honest to God, I've always wanted to help people, but I get sidetracked because money sidetracks you money puts you in a position where you're like you make a decision for that money again instead of seeing what the actual purpose and goal of your life is that's what money did to me bro Correct. i saw yeah, the millions yeah for sure i said the millions i saw how much money i could make i just fucking went for it and emotionally it completely wrecked me so yeah. cool now you're in a position where you have a lot of money now i wanted to help I wanted to help. I was making videos, bro. The first few YouTube videos I spent over two hundred fifty thousand dollars on. Wow! Do you know how much views I got? <laughs> Very curious. What's the answer? Two thousand <laughs> for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow! So, so where did you spend the money on then? I booked a private jet for a few random people, <laughs> booked like an insane villa, threw a party that was like $70,000. Wow. Um, whatever, bro. Like it was all wrong. I was drinking. I was mm. going out. I was fucking like, bro, I do none of that stuff anymore. I yeah. don't okay. have sex with women. I don't, I don't even masturbate. I don't drink. Okay. I don't. Like, bro, I quit coffee. The only reason I have a coffee now is because I have this podcast and another podcast and yeah, then yeah. another few meetings. I'm like, okay, I got to be yeah, sharp. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, sharp, for sure. There is so much stuff going on. Mm. And the only reason I was making YouTube videos, I thought if I become famous on YouTube, I can make a bigger impact to change the world. Honest to God, that was what I wanted to do. That's but I completely, <laughs> I completely <laughs> missed. I, bro, gosh, I, I missed so hard. <laughs> oh my God. So at some point you're giving, I, I was in South Africa. I was here in Bali. I'm just giving money, bro. I'm just trying to help people, schools, whatever. I didn't even record it. I was just trying to help, but I'm like, okay, how can I make a bigger impact? What can I do? And it hit me when I saw Andrew Tate. Mm. He inspired me. I was yeah. like, whoa, there is so much potential in having a voice and making a change in the world. Of course. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you hate the man, love the man, whoever the fuck it is. Mm. But I can see what this type of influence does. And I have always helped people by teaching them how to do sales, by teaching them how to be confident. But just in how I completely forgot my purpose. Mm. I went to sit down to meditate, to pray, to talk to something, some entity out there. And it hit me. I've always wanted to give. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before, but better. Invested tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars in this new project. Mm. Doing the same exact thing that I did before, but better. Better community, better games, 
I'm yeah. hell, bro. I'm making an app, a complete app based on all of the problems that I had. And I'm putting this all into one society. Freedom Society is basically me giving everybody back a one to 10 step by step way on becoming location independent. Doing whatever you want, however you want, at whatever time you want, teaching you how to socially engineer and using that in your advantage to work from everywhere, for wherever, for little, from wherever you want. Mm. That is what Freedom Society is. But it's a community. This is okay. a way to connect with people. The number one thing that people struggle with is having the right people around them. So what if I can give that to you? What if I can give you people that are like-minded across the globe? I want to have hundreds of thousands of people in this community. And I want people to connect with themselves. I wanted them to do events. The yeah. one thing that I noticed when I was doing the events in Holland, people mm -hmm. became friends for life. Even yeah. in the community, they became friends for life. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can do the exact same thing again, but with this app, hey, I'm in Korea. And in Korea, I don't know where to go to the gym or have a good co-working spot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Elias is in Korea. Oh, he's mm -hmm. actually been to this place and checked in. Yo, bro, want to hang out? Sure, let's go. This right. app is going to revolutionize. Hmm. This The coachings that I give revolutionize. I do it myself. This is not some people that I hire. Back in the day, I used to just teach one business model, high ticket sales. People made a lot of money with that. Now I diversify. And in Freedom Society, I have multiple business models that I that have done. Sales for agency, appointment setting, uh, high ticket closing. All of these business models are in there with step-by-step -step guide and how to do it. This is the easiest way to do it. Bro, listen, if you know how much money I invested into people studying and analyzing how to get the most out of the course, if people literally do word for word what I say in the course, which is impossible not to do with everything that I give, they will make money. <laughs> it's, mm. it's impossible. Guaranteed. And yeah. um, the, the travels that I do, for instance, now I'm in Bali, and every yeah. eight weeks we give away a free trip to the okay. people like if you perform well in the community you get a raffle ticket for everything every time you like show a pitch or do whatever and if you do that you get a raffle ticket and you go to a specific spot so we have so much cool shit in this community that is all based to be an extension to you to help you and mm. for every dollar profit that we make the half of that goes into a treasury so i can give back now i have this full package of amazing stuff i'm helping myself I'm mm -hmm. not going broke, <laughs> giving away. Yeah, for sure. I'm putting I'm money in the that. treasury. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm helping the people join the community. Hmm. So that's, cool, right? Yeah, it's very cool because I saw, like, I heard your backstory. I heard where it's coming from, the purpose of helping other people. And I actually yeah, have the same feeling. Um, and you also build it back in one app. So, but I have one question, maybe for the viewers right now. So the first sure. one is... Um, you see a lot of people these times on Instagram telling them, you know, you get freedom. You, I'm teaching this business model. I'm teaching you this and this and this. So what is in one sentence, what differentiates the freedom society from all these other people that promising the same value that you promising because, but I believe you, um, but what is for other people? You don't, don't have to you? believe me, Elias, yeah. you don't have to believe me. No, I'm no. not, I'm not here shouting that I want somebody to believe what I'm saying. Sure. Once again, I'm not here out there showing my expensive watch and showing how much money I make. This whole conversation I had with you, this podcast, yeah, I've sure. given you the way I make decisions. Mm -hmm. I've shown you my expertise and how I and how I do things. And I feel like that is more powerful because based on that, you can make a decision whether I'm capable of teaching you how to become the best version of yourself. Sure. So if you've listened to this whole podcast and you're feeling like, yo, what Rabid is saying, that is power, that is powerful, that is exactly what I feel like I would fuck with, I am teaching everything in the course, in the mm -hmm. community. I'm there coaching. So if you feel like that is like, I am the X factor here. I've done sales my whole life. Yeah, yeah, I'm teaching right. that to everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like that is the thing for you, join. Yeah, actually that's- 50 that's bucks a month, bro. Yeah, what is yeah. 50 bucks a month? Like, 50 like bucks a back, month, that's my next question. So what's the price for like joining? 50, 50 bucks a month, okay? Back nice. in the day, Elias, back in the day, I asked thousands of dollars. Mm. Now, 50 bucks a month. Mm. So, Why do you think I'm doing that? I don't want to make a shit ton of money, bro. I want to have as much people in as they can. Yeah, for sure. Like, bro, like for me, the only reason why, like, 
I'd love to make a shit ton of money because the more money you have, the bigger the production is, the more people it can help, whatever. Yeah, but we yeah. said, yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to make this accessible. This is better knowledge than I thought these people that are making over seven figures nowadays. Mm. Better knowledge, more mm. in depth, more professional. Looking, I've spent too much money on design, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All to make this evergreen for people to be able to enjoy it to the fullest. Mm. Very nice. Okay. So, like, one question about that, and I find it very respect that you want to be made it accessible for other people for the 50 bucks. But, sure. like, there, there was a reason that you previously and all these other people, like, selling the, these courses for like thousands of, uh, yeah. of like, euros, dollars. So, what do you think about the perceived value you get, like, if you're asking different, different prices? Do you think people perceive the value of your course more valuable if they pay a higher price than? For the 50 bucks so why did you like it, it i must I, admit I understand the benefit of the of the accessibility for I'm, sure. i must admit the reason why a lot of people was were really successful in the community that mm. i had before it was a course this is a community mm. was because they paid a lot of money yeah for sure you take stuff a lot more serious mm. you it is an investment you want to make back and i I've, i've noticed yeah but i want to make this information accessible and i want people to join a movement So by being here, you're connecting globally with a lot of people that are like you. Mm. This is not for me, like I'm not doing this for the cash, hard earned cash for myself. Yeah, for sure. And I want people to know that that's the actual case. I really, really, really want people to because become successful. So if they at some point are decide, yo, I might want to have a step up. Heck, bro, my students, I have people that do the international thing that are making seven mm -hmm. figures. I have people do the national thing in Holland do the seven figures. Their students, I have testimonials of them, go to their links, buy whatever they're selling for thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Feel free. Feel welcome. I, I'm not complaining. Yeah, But if sure. you want to, like, I, I 100% know if you make the commitment towards yourself to do whatever I'm asking of you, you'll get there. Yeah, yeah. I totally understand. I think it differentiates you also for like fulfilling your purpose, going after your purpose, uh, sacrificing on maybe a money. Uh, for long term, I don't think so. I think you make will make also a substantial amount of money if you base it because it's more stable to build it up. Um, but for I think it's more powerful for you to like actually following your purpose. What I understand from the whole story and what you're from the whole podcast. 100%. That's very 100%. important. Very inspiring. So let's see. Let's have a, like two years upfront. Like, what? Wh where do you see yourself in like one? Let, let's say two years. What's the, uh, the goal back, of the Freedom Society? Where do you see yourself? Back in the day, Elias. Back in the day, I would really, really, really be like, "Oh my God, I want to be here. I want to yeah. have this. I want to have this car." Mm -hmm. I've had my dream car. Yeah, I've had my dream watch. I have had all my dreams. Mm. If anything, the only thing that I want is to to be on the face of change in the world. Okay. I want to a hundred percent. I want to give away a billion dollars. That's what mm. I want. I'm not sure if I can make that in two years, nice. but, <laughs> but uh, I I want to be I want to be the face of change. I want a hundred percent to have given away a billion dollars before I enter my grave at some point. Mm. How I do it freedom society i mm. probably at some point will like the thing is with freedom society the, the whole thing is that i can do it with my hand that 50 if i feel like hey there's something going on in tunisia i can fly to tunisia and help them out ukraine mm. in detail whatever if i go to kurdistan i want to help the people out i want to make projects where i help refugees become mm. normalized in societies where they were normalized at the start i want to mm. be able to do all of this stuff bro mm. and With something with that we're doing, we can actually manage to do something like that. But it's all step by step. People tend to lose themselves in the bigger goals instead of looking at what they can do today and now. If you focus, if you have this beautiful big goal at the end that is almost impossible to reach, it's still about knowing what kind of steps you have to take today in order to get there. And I don't know what that is. Growing the community, getting people on, doing a fun podcast like this, and hopefully people are going to appreciate me and sure. just join in. Maybe you want to join in. Feel free. Yeah, I, th I like like people like you because I feel see myself also a little bit in you. My purpose is also to fulfill, help other people. If if you ask a lot of people around me, they will tell you exactly the same thing. I will also help, always help to other people. Um, the money is like 
uh, I think, but I, that's, that's something, a side note, but you have to, I think you have to experience first how it feels to have a lot of money before you could understand that it purpose is more important than money. No, the thing that you need is to not worry about your bills anymore. If yeah. you don't worry about money, that's the mm -hmm. moment you can start, but people lose themselves in money, bro. That's I've been right. fucked over for millions of dollars mm -hmm. because people choose money over friendship. Yeah. And it, right in front of my face, bro, people that I genuinely loved, genuinely felt hardshipful, I would go through thick and thin, stab you in the back for no apparent mm. reason. Why money makes you blind. For sure. And I'm glad I experienced it because for that reason, because I've seen this happening, mm. I know not to get blinded by money. I'm glad. I'm glad I got fucked over because I've learned who, what people are real with me. And sure. what is real? What is a sense of reality? What is actual truth? Hmm. Very interesting, actually. Yeah. Let me, let me quickly right. take this off. For a second. Yeah, for sure. Oh, shit. <laughs> there you go. So one like a question that adds on on, on the story of making an impact and uh, growing the freedom society for you sure. like you of course have a marketing strategy for yourself you want to get people to join in um well, honestly but... uh, i wish no. i had more i had more <laughs> of a marketing strategy, bro like, listen the thing is i'm a bit scared man i don't want to push too hard because people are gonna think i'm gonna sell out the only thing that we have for a marketing strategy one second the only actual marketing strategy that we have is we have affiliate marketing. I I want this thing to grow so hard that we give 50% commission every single month mm. on this community right now. So that, by the way, if, if you want to just put a link down here and like make some money on it, sure, go for it. <laughs> for sure, I will put it in the podcast links always. Like I'm always supporting. I don't uh, I like that. Not so, take the affiliate link, bro. I want you to make money on it. It's, it's cool. Like, <laughs> you know, so the thing is, I want people like, here's the thing. I'm making this community for people. It's not for me, bro. Take 50%. I want yeah. you to take the 50% because you've done your hard work and hard whatever just to put this here. Do mm. you understand? And mm. the fact is that people need, well, I don't say need money, but people could use this money more than I could. So if I could give you 50% of like 100 people joining in, I hope you're happy with that and you are impacting a lot of other people doing the same exact thing. So for me, it's no stress. So if you are in the capability, you like Elias's podcast, the yeah. Suck My Penis uh, podcast, <laughs> uh, self-made podcast. Sorry, I forgot it for a second. Yeah, same, um, same, uh, yeah. <laughs> suck My Penis. You never thought about that, by the way? Well, <laughs> maybe you should have like, like you know, thought that one through. Anyway, if you like the Suck My Penis podcast, just click on the link down there. And you give Elias a little bit of support too. <laughs> Yeah, I would change the logo, I think. Change also the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I like that. I, I enjoyed this podcast for like from the beginning. Like, uh, But I want to come back on this affiliate thing. Um, sure. Because I also see, I'm like, um, my whole backstory, people knowing me, I'm, I'm uh, doing like the market. What you do with sales, I have like 10 years of experience with marketing. So I know from fact uh, and rotate the the hustlers university does the same strategy so is that an inspiring factor for you that you also of use of course the yeah but the thing is i want you to know i'm giving so i want i want to give hmm. brother i want to give i know that the only way to grow is giving bro hmm. the people in my team are calling me fucking crazy they're like yo bro i want to get 50 50 percent is a lot i'm like that ah, yeah, yeah. like thank you Bro, you want to put 50% in the treasury? You're not going to have anything left. Bro, put 50% in the treasury. But I want to make money too. Bro, I'm going to pay you out. Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to be fine. We're not going to die. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That is, um, it's a good strategy, I think. But you have to like. Uh, I don't know. We'll Maybe see. I'll go broke. Who knows? <laughs> you launched like previous week, right? What was that? Sorry? You launched previous week? Yeah, correct. Correct. So the app is also ready or is still in like uh, in work? The MVP will be ready in th three weeks. So the minimum oh, viable product. 
Okay, so, keep me updated. So, I, I'm very interested to see that. What do you mean? You're going to join the community after this call. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're just going to be in there. What do you mean? Well, <laughs> keep you up to date. You're in the community, aliens. What do you mean? Yeah, I'll review that. I, I, for sure, I will do that. So I, I wanted to get back to making a, <laughs> a big impact. Um, so, like, what do you think is now the biggest or best method to make an impact uh like you we're talking about andrew tate you see his personal brand his status he's impacting millions of billions of lives uh by creating his influence on the way he did and i think we all know how he did it but what is your like are you wanted to uh, following that up also creating like more content uh being like on youtube uh you i, I think you know even gatsi hamza uh, all these kind of guys that do, does the same thing also have this purpose. Is that something we can expect from you to see you on, on all the different channels? I guess you don't follow my YouTube channel. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh. but don't, I'm not ta only talking about YouTube. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess my content strategy isn't working. Well, I need to <laughs> hire new people, man. Oh, fuck. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're everywhere, bro. We have like, like. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we have like ten different YouTube channels, ten different like TikTok channels. We, wow. um, like like five different up. IGs. We have like people making that stuff for us. Uh, we're posting wow. clips, uh, of stuff like this every single day, sometimes twice a day. Uh, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on man um yeah. go to my youtube channel like we post amazing yeah. amazing videos mm. where i'm just out in the street talking to people where i share stories about my life mm. as you might be able to tell i really love telling stories yeah, and sure. there, there have been a lot of different type of stories that have happened to me over the past couple of years for instance getting screwed over a couple of million dollars mm. for instance selling all of my stuff and talking to the biggest youtubers on the planet mm. for instance getting my Rolex stolen by my editor uh, or having wow. like, we, we literally had um, a, a, a story about me having a threesome mm -hmm. and or, or just, just fuck around story. And we posted it on Instagram and like accidentally got like 150,000 views. I don't even know how that happened. Like mm -hmm. for, for, for me, my doing that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 that's uh, just Instagram. We have like TikTok and other places, but like sometimes we just get the most random clips going viral for no apparent reason. But, yeah, anyway awesome. yeah i yeah, know we're everywhere <laughs> yeah we're everywhere. okay so for people who doesn't know that don't know that check them out on all, all different channels um, probably nobody knows me anymore like I, i've been forgotten you didn't even know who my students are nowadays oh my god it's going yeah, bad i didn't I, yeah you were talking about any bit i didn't know that because i see him like as mr high ticket closing right now and i see you more focusing on the freedom society so that's it's the same cool. thing okay whatever <laughs> yeah. but, so so here's, here's the thing um mm -hmm. I've noticed that my influence within this space has gone very dim and it's fine. Mm -hmm. I like it because the thing is, I like, it's like, have you played Call of Duty back in the day? Yeah, for sure. When you, when like you play it. Call of Duty, sometimes like you just got a prestige and then yeah, you start yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's, that's how it feels Correct. for me right now, man. But mm -hmm. I will bet you, bro, like in, like come back to this podcast in a few years time, you're going to be surprised about how much people now suddenly know Ray Bean. Good. Right, I, I just know it because the the our intentions are so right. The mm. way we're working with the stuff that we're doing is so good. Mm. I have this confidence, this belief that there's no other way than a hundred percent success in this platform that we're building. A hundred percent. Very inspiring. Yeah, that's if you like that confidence. And I think people should join. You know, <laughs> well, we've walked, we've walked the talk already. We've done this in Holland. That was the biggest yeah, yeah. and best course right. within sales in Holland, and the only one. But still, <laughs> we're yeah. the best and yeah, the biggest but... one. Every everybody knew me in Holland mm. uh, for that reason. So if I can do it once, if I've made seven figures once, I can do the same exact thing again. Yeah. It's you need to you you've walked the path. That's now you just have to use the same app. Yeah, I agree. That is uh, something I also tell people, but I think you only know that if you have earned seven figures or six figures, that that's the same thing. You can, it's just the same uh, game of chess. People ask me like, uh, how do you business? How can I start this and this and this? And I tell them it's just a game of chess, but it's every business model is a different. It's the same table, the same, like uh, the same table, but it's a different strategy on the, on the table. Uh, but people don't understand that. I think a lot of people think it's too complicated and everything. But besides that, I had a different question. 
uh, for you, like we were talking about your dad as an inspiring model for you in the in the beginning. Uh, Andrew Tate, it's inspired you. Um, my my but, dad. Okay, but sorry, sorry. Uh, please. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like yeah, your dad is a different relationship. Of course, I understand mm -hmm. that. But um, like, who are the people that you're seeing right now that you're not specifically look up to, but inspire you as more, or you think you are pretty real for what they do? Because you told me in the beginning, a lot of people are fake. So who are the people for other people watching so, right now? Unironically. I really like Andrew Tate for the reason that you just told me. Mm. He, whatever he is that he's doing, he seems authentic. Like, sure. it, it, I don't yeah, know I mean, how, sure. because this man is screaming the wildest shit, but he's mm. authentic while saying it. So, mm. um, and he has a big ass influence. So, mm. like, the thing is, what I've noticed, because the thing is, when I was still doing YouTube, I did this one trip where I drove all the way to Andrew Tate's house to give him the most expensive sparkling water. That was before I was like, I was still trying to figure out how to get a bigger influence in space and was just clickbaiting. Um, that was a very interesting story. Logan Paul even messaged me. It was the wildest <laughs> shit ever. Listen, Elias, it was the wildest shit ever. But, but the story for a different time. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that next podcast. <laughs> next, next podcast, sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But... I have noticed just the the way, like, I don't fully agree with everything that Andrew Tate says. Even more so, I feel like being in a position like him, I would do a lot of things differently. Mm. Um, for instance, I saw the BBC thing. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. saw it. Yeah. Um, I don't follow him by foot, standing everything that is going on, but I did see the BBC stuff that was going on. Mm. A lot of people are backing Andrew. I'm like, yo, I think he could have done that a lot better, especially knowing what kind of influence he has and how he is. I understand fully why he's acting the way he is, but personally, I would have been a bit more slowed down, knowing how articulate he is, knowing how strong his opinions are. I just looking at how some things he's doing, mm. I would I would do differently in the same position. So, but doesn't take away from the fact that he's a very smart human being. I sure. think we're both the same personality type. I think we're both extroverted, intuitive thinking perceivers. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if you are into the 16 personalities or whatever. If not, you really should because it's it's insane. But um, I see a lot of similarities in the way he does stuff. I just know that, um, I mean, what works for him, it works for him. I, I feel like even though I do have an ego, I'm a bit more humbled down. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> I, hope yeah. I, I hope I don't have an ego that big. Yeah, but yeah. um yeah but just just so in that space sure um but i don't really i'm not really focusing because there's like i've walked around the people that i look up to or look up with are people that i have in my hemisphere like they, they're all around me man all and sure. these are all friends of mine they, they mm -hmm. most of the people that i know that are the same as me don't like to be in the front of the camera like <laughs> none yeah. of them are. Sure. and these are very very influential people like they they have power they have money but mm -hmm. none of them really w wants to show for it like like i'm doing mm -hmm. um all very powerful wealthy giving people but the thing is that the actual role models you want to have sometimes are not the ones that you see online. Correct. I agree. Yeah, for sure. So based on that, is it like, does it has more like you have benefits of being in front of the camera, building your personal brand up? Is that something is not necessary for like 2023? Or is it like you can I, also stay off camera and be successful? If I could change the world in the way I wanted to, would helping billions of people giving away a billion dollars if i could do that and i would know the way on doing that without showing my face i probably would for sure but here's the here's the crux i don't know yeah. <laughs> the thing that i do know is using my voice my brand my my charisma mm. in order to get that because i know i have that i know i have a good voice i know i have a good way of talking to people mm. i know i have this influence so why wouldn't i use it For you sure. understand so probably, yeah yeah totally totally i totally understand if you have a power don't why don't you use it for your benefits like andrew tate has been comso by by saying things uh talking a different way uh, fucking outrageous <laughs> but he gets to his point like where he's standing right now if he didn't do did do that and he showed his face at that moment he didn't um had this big influence right now so sometimes i don't think it's bad i think people a lot of people thought it's bad to become like famous or an influencer 
but you can do a lot. It depends on the purpose, what you're doing with the attention you get, I think. Um, so as an, like a closer for this amazing podcast with you, what is your most inspiring lesson that you got from all these years doing sales, living? What is the most, the, the, like the most important thing that would stand by from you? In one Understand your self and your value. So people don't really know how valuable they are. They don't understand how much of a miracle they are as a person, what they're able to achieve. Nobody really understands how, how amazing you are as a human being. And because you don't have that understanding of yourself, because you don't see how much value you have inside of you, you will never achieve the things that you're made for doing. So reflect more with yourself, talk more with yourself, put that phone away, go away and just have a few conversations with yourself in order to find out who you are as a person, in order to find what your actual value is, what you have to offer to the universe, to the world. Because if you do, you might end up at the highest heights you could never, ever wish for. And if you don't, you'll remain in the position that you are now forever. Okay, very good ending of the podcast. Thank you very much oh. for oh, the, the well, sun is like completely far, right. <laughs> like Jesus this Christ. also felt it's like the ending of the podcast. What, what is like, going on? <laughs> God is like that was so good. <laughs> you know this sound like it's. <laughs> well, I don't know what happened there, but uh, holy I shit, bro, that was insane! Like, I don't, like, what, insane. what is this sound from me? Good momentum. Okay, there you yeah, go. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fixed it. Yeah. The, oh my God. It's just uh, yeah, good enough. You're playing with the lens. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, inspiring words. And I think a lot of people would, uh, if they listened, join the Freedom Society if you want to upgrade your life, uh, getting inspired with other people. Um, and you don't feel alone because something that I want to add as a side note um, this game of self development is. Uh, and getting like successful or fulfilling your purpose is most of the time a pretty alone business. You're mostly alone in the same mindset and they're not like a lot of people like minded. So for if you want to join a um, like like minded community, join the Freedom Society. That was the uh -huh. end of the podcast and uh, we'll do another one soon. <laughs> Inshallah. Have a good day, guys. Thanks for listening.